we're gonna build on on this stuff um so just like yesterday we said when you have log base 10 of x that sort of makes it you know special in the sense that it's called a common log and we can omit writing the base 10 and we could just get away with writing log of x right well similarly um, we also said yesterday that log could have any number as its base. Log could have even root 2 as its base, okay? It could have root 5 as its base. It could have 5 over 7 as its base. Any number could be a base. Now, there is yet another number in math that we are not introduced to until today. Um, so just like pi and root 2 are irrational numbers, right? Pi is a number that never ends. Root 2 is a number that never ends. There is another one called E, right? This number E, it's named E because of the scientist who came up with it. It's, his name is spelled like this, E-U-L-E-R. It's spelled Euler, but it's spelled with an E. Um, so this number e is similar to pi in that it's a constant, right, that never ends. It's an irrational constant that never ends. e has the value 2.718, okay? Um, and it's called the natural base. So now, when you have a logarithm with a base e of x, just like in the case before where you have log base 10 of x, you, you have a modified way of writing it. When you have log base e of x, the whole thing can be rewritten as ln of x. And what does ln stand for? Well, e is the natural base of the logarithm. And when log has a base e, we call it a natural logarithm. In French, that's logarithm naturel, so that's ln. All right, and that's where it comes from. So you're walking down the street, you see log base e of 5, you go, oh, that's just ln of 5. Okay? So ln, in other words, is just shorthand for log of e. Okay? Similarly, I'm walking down the street and I see something like ln of 7, I go, oh, that's just log with a base e of 7. Does that make sense? Sort of? Okay, all right, so that's what this is telling us, that E is the natural base, and in shorthand form, um, log of E is just ln of E, okay? All right, so what does that mean now? Let's skip to this, example one. And it says to write each expression in logarithmic form, right? Okay, so if I'm going to write it in logarithmic form, how would I have done it before? That would just have been log base what? What's the base here? The base is e of 23 is equal to x. But I don't do log e. That's not really accepted. What do I do instead? ln of 23 is equal to x. So I wouldn't even use that intermediate step, okay? I would just go from that to that. All right, so take a look at this one. How would I write this one? Ln of x is equal to four. Uh, ln of x is equal to four, right. Okay? All right, so now if we go back up here, right? E to the ln of x, so when I have something like this, 5 to the power of log base 5 of x, what happens here? The 5 log 5 cancels, right? So similarly, if I have e to the ln of x, the e and the ln go away, so the answer is just x, okay? Same here. If I have ln of e of x, ln and e go away, the answer is just x, okay? Let's take a look at that last one. So this is ln of e, meaning it's log base e, right? So it's like there is a base of e in here. And what is this telling me? It's telling me e to the power of what gives me e again, and that answer is 1. 
So ln of e is always 1. Okay? ln of e is always 1. All right. Let's go back down here. And we're going to write this in exponential form. So now here we have a logarithm, ln of x. That's a logarithm. And it equals to some number. What's the answer to a logarithm always? It stands for what? It's a what? It's an exponent. So if this is an exponent, every exponent needs a base. What's the base to this exponent? E. E, right? Because this is an ln, the base is E. So I say, okay, E to the 1.2528 is equal to x. All right, how about for B? What's the answer to a logarithm? An exponent. So x is the exponent. What's the base? E. So e to the x is equal to 25. Okay? Any questions? Right, well, here it's not telling us to solve. It's just telling us to rewrite. Okay? We are going to solve in a little bit, though. Okay. So all the properties that we learned about condensing and expanding with logs also apply to this, okay? So this one, you have a coefficient and it becomes an exponent. So this becomes ln of 3 to the 4 minus ln of 6, right? So now, this is, if we're going to condense it, we're going to write it as a single logarithm. So this gets 1 ln of 3 to the 4. And if I have a minus in between the logs, what does that translate to? Multiplication or division? Division. So divided by 6. Okay? And this we need to simplify. So that's ln of 81 over 6. We can divide both by 3, so that'll be ln of 27 over 2, okay? All right, <clears throat> what about the next one? What's going to happen to the 2? Uh-huh, so that's ln of 3 squared plus ln of 4 plus ln of y. Now, what do these pluses translate to? Multiplication. So it's going to be ln of 3 squared times 4 times y. So that's ln of 36y. Okay? Questions? Okay. All right, so what about this one here? Um, equations and inequalities with E and LN, right? So let's see how we solve equations with E and LN. Um, it's almost like it's a little bit simpler because of, you know, LN of E equals 1 because of that relationship. So here we need to solve for X. First thing I need to do is get rid of the 4. How do I get rid of the 4? Minus 4 on both sides. 3e to the negative 2x is equal to 6. Now what? What do I do with the 3? Divide by 3. So e to the negative 2x will be 2. Okay. Now, remember before, well, remember before we would take the logarithm of each side? Now, what's the logarithm that goes with e? Log base e, which is ln. So I take ln of both sides, ln, ln. Okay, I know. So what happens to ln and e? They go away. So I have negative 2x equals ln of 2. And now what am I going to do with the negative 2? Divide, divide. So x is ln of 2 over negative 2. All right, let's put that in our calculator and see what we get. So go ahead and take out your calculators. Could you plug that entire equation? Yeah. What or do you mean? You, the one from before? No, the one we just solved, starting with 3e to the negative 2x. No, you can't plug that Yeah. Okay. So ln is this one. It's right underneath the log. Oh, right. And notice um, second ln is e. So ln and e are the same button. So now we're going to do 
ln of 2, close the parentheses, divided by negative 2. You see it? Yeah. It's right underneath the log, to the left of the, of the 4. Do you have to close the parentheses or will it do huh? it? You cannot cancel the 2's out because the 2 is, the upper 2 is inside the ln. So it's ln of 2 divided by 2. All right, so the answer is negative 0 0.3466. Um, it says to go to the nearest 10 thousandths place, which is four decimal places. With logarithms, we always go to four decimal places. It's good practice for you guys to do that because when we do trig, you're always going to get into this habit of four decimal places. Okay, let's do one more. What am I going to do with the 12 here? Add to both sides. So 3e to the 4x is 27. What now? Divide by 3. So e to the 4x is what? 9. What now? Take the ln of both sides. That's my favorite thing to do in life. So that goes away. So I have 4x equals ln of 9. What now? Divide by 4. Divide by 4. So x is ln of 9 over 4, okay? We plug that in. Whoa. What is it? 0 0.5493. ln and e go away, always. Because, because it's... Ln of e is log base e of e, and that's just one. Yes. Okay. All right. One more. Now I have an ln. Okay. Now I have a logarithmic equation. What am I going to do to get rid of the two first? Divide. So ln of 5x is equal to 3. Now, when I had an exponential function, I took the ln to get rid of it. When I have ln, I need an exponential function to get rid of it. Okay? So, what is the base here? E. e. What is the exponent of that base in this problem? Three. Three, because the answer to the log is always an exponent. Right? So, I say 5x is equal to e to the 3. Okay? Everybody with me on that? The answer to a logarithm is always an exponent. In this case, the base is e, so it's e to the 3. Now I divide by 5, and I divide by 5. So x is e to the 3 divided by 5. So let's see how much that is. Yes, so second ln is your e button, right? And it was e to the 3. Divided by 5. Again, if your calculator doesn't do this print of, you know, elevating the uh, exponent, you have to put parentheses around the e cubed. Otherwise, you get an entirely different answer. So that's going to be 4.0171. Yeah. Um, you can program the calculator to do things and for that like you need to write code okay now we're gonna go back in time even though it's not Thursday but we're still gonna go back in time what day is it today it's Wednesday huh way back Wednesday that's right so way back a long time ago we learned about compound interest right and like, take a look at this problem. You have $8,000 deposited into a, uh, an account with some interest for a certain number of years. And we said that in the first case, it's um, that the bank is paying you interest. It's compounded semi-annually. So the bank is paying you interest twice a year. And then we said it could be monthly where it pays you interest 12 times a year. Or daily, it could pay you interest 365 times a year. And we saw that as the number of times the bank pays us interest goes up, the, the amount of money we get goes up. 
So now, so what if you're in this bank and you know you're you're negotiating where to put your large sum of eight thousand dollars, and you go, you know what? No, like three hundred and sixty-five times a year, that that's still not good enough for me. I need I need more, right? So the you yeah, know, yeah. so the guy says, okay, all right, all right, okay, we really want your money. How about this? How about if we program our computers to pay you interest continuously, meaning every nanosecond of every second of every day, this computer this computer is going to calculate and pay you interest continuously. And you go, oh my God, I kind of like the sound of that. So what happens then to how we calculate this? The formula needs to be modified. Because if it's paying you really every single nanosecond, how many times in a year is that? No. That's like an infinite amount of times, right? So how am I going to, so that means N is going to be infinity? How does that work? Right? How does the, how does the formula change when N is infinity? Well, let's see. So here, where are we? So, so, yeah, so the formula we had started with was that, right? Now, if n became infinitely large, so listen, if n became infinitely large, mathematically what happens is this 1 plus 1 over n over n, so this thing that I've circled, 1 plus r over n over n, as n becomes infinitely large, that turns into that magical number e. Okay, this is what happens background in, in the background in the mathematics. So now that formula needs to be modified then. So now it's a equals p times this magical number e, and I still have my r and my t. So now I have a whole new formula. Okay, that is the formula for continuously compounded interest. It's A equals P e to the RT. It's APERT. I call it the PERTY formula. That's what it is. It's APERT. There's only one case where you use it. You have to look for the magic words. The magic words are compounded what? Continuously. Like in this problem. You have a huge sum of $700. You find an account that pays an astonishingly huge amount of interest, 3%, compared to like interest rates now, that is pretty huge actually, huh? And continuously, oh my gosh, we're going to make so much money. Okay, so what's the balance in eight years? So let's see. A is what we need. How much is the principal? 700 R is what? 0 0.03. T is 8. So since it's continuously, I'm going to use this formula. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it's... Huh? No, it would be like a, a 8 over 365, so it would be like the fraction of the number. Yeah. Uh, because it's 3% annual interest, right? It's not daily interest. So e to the 0 0.03 times 8. Okay, let's, let's plug that in. Man, that's so much money. Okay, so 700 e to the power of 0 0.03 times 8. Okay, $889.87. Right? So the way the formula works is that E, right, the 1 plus, 1 plus R over N to the power of N, that now turned into E. When you look at it, in the beginning, that formula starts to increase, but then there is a point where it just levels off. So no matter how many years you have it in there, you're going to get that there's always going to be a cap on how much money you're going to get. You're never going to win like infinite amounts of money okay let's take a look at this one how long will it take for the balance in your account to reach at least twelve hundred dollars okay so let's be uh, um, wise about this in eight years it 
turned into $889. So whatever answer I get has to be greater or less than eight years. Greater than. So, okay. So A is 1,200 because that's the final amount. P is 700. That's how much I started with. R is still 0.03 and I'm looking for the time. So our favorite formula, P e to the RT, 1,200 equals 700 e to the 0.03t, what do I do now? Divide by 700. And I can, here I can get rid of two zeros from the top and two zeros from the bottom. So I get 12 over 7 equals e to the 0.03t. Okay, how do I get rid of that e? Take the ln of both sides. Awesome. Okay, so I'll write it up here. So I have ln of 12 over 7 equals 0.03t. What am I going to do now? Divide by 0.03. Divide by 0.03. Oh my gosh, this is a mess. Well, let's see how we're going to get through this mess. So it's ln of 12 over 7. That whole thing divided by 0.03. Let's plug that in the calculator. Let's go slow. Um, well, it depends on how correct you want your answer to be. If you want your answer to be correct, okay, this is it. Okay, so ln of 12 over 7. Let's just press enter. That's what we get. And now we're going to divide that by 0.03. You could have done it all in the same line as well. So T is 17.97, which we could pretty much round to 18 years. Well, remember, because the time is going to be in years, right? Because it's an, like here, it was eight years. Remember, we even talked about that if it's like eight days, we have to convert it to years. So the time in the formula is always years. Does it ask how many days? And, well, then you take the 18 years and you multiply it by 365, and that's how many days. Okay? All right. So how about this one? How much would have to be deposited? So what am I looking for in this problem? What quantity? A, P, E, A, P, P right? Okay, so A is equal to P E to the R T. We want the balance to reach 1,500. That's my A. The rate is the same, times 12. Yeah, it's the same problem. Okay. So, 1,500 is equal to P times all of this. So how much is that? Let's plug that in the calculator. E to the 0.03 times 12, oops, 1.433. So now look, I'm going to write this here, but I'm not going to use that rounded number, right? How much is P? It's 1,500 divided by that, right? When I plug it in my calculator, I say 1,500, but not divided by that rounded number, divided by second answer to get the most accurate version, the most precise version that I can. So that's 1,046 and 51 cents. Okay? Now, just for fun, we're now going to go back to that problem of our $8,000. Okay, where was that? Here. So, we said that when interest is paid 365 times a year, this is how much money we get, 16935 what if you did convince them to pay you continuously? How much money would you get then? So quickly, go ahead and calculate the case where it's compounded continuously. Page 7. 
So go ahead and do that. I'll stop this for a minute. Yeah. Right? So, so when you do it this way, you get a whopping $16,936.00. So the difference between interest being calculated daily and continuously is a whole 87 cents paid over 15 years. Okay? So that's what it is. And the reason for that is that this formula, as n gets larger, it just levels up. Like in the beginning, it starts increasing, 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 but there comes a point where the whole thing, it just levels up as n gets larger and larger. Okay? Huh? It levels off when that 1 plus 1 over n to the n, it levels off because that reaches e. Right? So you would have to like plug that in to the calculator. You put in like um, t equals 15. So you put in the calculator um, the amount 1 plus 0.03 to the power of n to the power of um, 15n, like this. Okay, so you put in everything except your n. You put in all of the parameters of the problem except for your n, and when you graph it, it'll it'll clearly level up at some point. Clearly, okay. All right. Um. So the homework due next time is tomorrow. Is this okay?